It's clear that you guys wanted to see the second part to this Sweden run, so as I promised, since we got 500 likes, I am continuing the run. In today's part of this run, I will be mostly focusing on the new world. As you can see, we have a small establishment in Canada. Just need two more provinces and we can establish our first colony. From there, of course, we can go to colonial Eastern America. We do have some claims from our missions, so we can attack these nations and form colonial nations a bit quicker this way. Later down the line, our mission path will lead us to the Caribbean. From there, we can go to Africa. So getting like a colony next to Jolof would be good because we could just pull annex them there, allied with some guy which is fine then to congo to cape to kilva and so on now the situation in europe is not perfect we have a small coalition including poland lubeck some germanic nations hre is still intact so expanding is a bit difficult not only that we also kind of messed up the mission stabilize the kingdom well i mean this spawns the event the crown of poland which potentially gives us the cb of restoration of union on poland but we cannot really achieve that because we have just terrible terrible relations with them as you know you need to have the same dynasty as poland to get that castle's belly so i might for that mission just go for the conquest path maybe dismantle the hre so we can continue expanding here potentially take like one province from brunswick so we can release burgundy and reconquer these provinces but yeah just saying don't be really surprised if we don't expand that much in our mainlands because i do want to do this colonial type of run so before continuing i also want to make a few changes to our nation first of all let's go to trade we can get additional merchant by adding these provinces in the white sea to our trade company another thing i want to do is make riga a march one of you guys left a comment saying that we could make him a march and he would be just roaming around with like lots of armies super strong armies so maybe let's do this as well hey look lubeck left the coalition as well okay so that gives me an idea designate march and what we're gonna do riga we're gonna send officers, which means 20% increased morale of armies and 5 discipline for these guys. So yeah, I will be starting a war versus Lubeck because they left. But before that, I also kind of want to get more alliances. Like, we only have England at this point. So getting someone like Austria, Bohemia, Venice could be good. And as I can see, Austria actually would not be intervening. They have horrible opinion about Lubeck. I guess they didn't return the provinces that they required to the HRE, which is good for us. We can just go ahead and ally Austria in such a case. By the way, guys, I noticed something. So you might say that we completely wiped Denmark, right? Remember that Ingolstadter succession war? Well, somehow Denmark ended up with pro one province here in the HRE. So they're a one province minor infiltrated the HRE. This guy, man, he just doesn't die. But anyways, we're good to go. So Lubeck, I will take like a few provinces. We don't want to take too much because the coalition will just expand rapidly. I think we can release a couple of new vassals, reconquer their provinces to make this a bit smoother. So let's go like that. Oh, Hamburg, we're going to make some hamburgers out of you. It is peasants war in Muscovy. Oh God, they're down bad. Oh, they're down bad. I think we can definitely eat them up like most of their nation, at least in the next war, 1493. No, 1494 actually. And there we go, we're losing stability or government reform progress, but the positive thing about this is that we only have 20 reform progress. I love when this number is on point for us to just expand administration, so in return we're getting additional governing capacity and we're not losing anything. So this is actually good for us, we actually gained a little bit of loyalty for nobility. Castile is the papal controller. Well, it appears that we cannot become one in this game. I kinda have given up. And by the way, I need to save up 100 papal points because we still have this crap that we need to pay debt to clergy. Yeah, this is gonna be expensive. Oh yeah, Riga marching with 24,000 soldiers. Get rid of my rebels for me, thank you so much. They're actually just wiping them. Ooh, we can take a province from Norway. You know what? I don't mind that, thank you. Speaking of Norway, I will probably integrate them at my earliest convenience. I know they can colonize, they have a colonist in their national ideas. But call me crazy, like in the runs that I have played, I played different nations, vassalized Norway, and they don't seem to colonize that much. So I don't really care about it that much. I do want to form Scandinavia in this run as well, for which we need some Norwegian provinces. We made some hamburgers, now some minced meat from Bremen. Okay, I have finished some course, so expanding stability or boosting stability is a bit cheaper now. I will boost it once. We will need to have positive stability and this also, of course, gives us passive prosperity. Okay, so guys, we don't need to continue the war any longer. 
I will be taking just free provinces, maximum cash, war operations. There is quite a large coalition, so if we decided, well, we could full annex them if we didn't take cash, war reps, and so on. But the coalition would be unbearable. It's not how I want to play this run. Let's just go with really minimal demands. This is going to be fine enough. So this province I will be quarrying and I will go to diplomacy and release a couple of new subjects which will be Volgast and also Mecklenburg. And now as you can see we have some cores on Lubeck from this guy, two cores, two cores here, two cores on Brandenburg so we can retake them a bit later. And really for now this is it in Europe, I will just get rid of my rebels so I can seize lands again and I will move to the new world so we can continue expanding there. So here we are guys, my first war in the new world will be versus Mi'kmaq. Why at this war we can get a couple provinces in colonial Canada to finish our colony and an establishment in Eastern America. We can co in this guy and let's roll. Cool, so here's our first four provinces in the new world. Well, the first ones that we conquered. Looking good and this allows us to complete our mission, New Sweden, which gives us additional colonists to any global settler increase and permaclaims in the Caribbean. So boys, I have been building spy network on Ichizi, I have around 50, what I will do is get a colony right next to these guys, get a claim, and just wipe them. Right, there we go, allied to Atova, which is fine, let's go, destroy y'all, I mean, we come with good intentions, don't mind us, just having a quick vacation in your capital area. We can, at this point, also start setting up a colony in the Caribbean. So maybe let's go to somewhere like Jamaica or Havana. Yeah, let's get a colony in Havana. Also, since we are level 7 Diplo Technology now, we have increased colonial range, which means we can continue our exploration. These gentlemen are such good guys, man, just giving us lands for free. So very nice of you, like, come on, you're too generous. Is that not a level expansion? Well, the thing now is, we only need to core 5 of these provinces. We are getting this one province, so realistically just 4 more. So let's core this up, this up. These are quite low development provinces, so we're good here. And after we have 5, of course, a new colonial nation will form, and will core these provinces for us for free. Now, the next thing we can do, we have 60% clergy loyalty, which means we can click repay debt to clergy, and we're getting additional bonus. It's not a huge one, but it's better than nothing, right? Holstein gets influential temple until the end of the game, 100% local tax modifier increase. Yes, we are still losing 10% of crownlands which does hurt but we will grow our crownlands anyways throughout the years which is fine. So now after doing this we can actually get some crownlands right now, 25% and we can complete stabilize the kingdom. Now the trick with this is, this is like one of the best events to have as Sweden. But as I said, we kind of messed this up. We have just horrible relations with Poland. So the first option, as good as it sounds, restoration of Union Castle's belly on them and basically on Lithuania. I don't think I will be going for it because it pretty much we cannot achieve that. So I think the second option for me is probably the best one. We can just conquer lands, get accepted culture, reduced autonomy, years of separatism, which is I guess something. So let's go for this. And basically from here we will need to get 15 provinces in Poland region. Some of these provinces we can just get through Teutonic Order's claims. And later on maybe even release additional vessels. You guys were so kind to let me know that developing Dalaskogin is not necessarily better than developing any other province despite of their insane monument. However, I have to note that we still need to develop this province to 10 base production for one of the missions. So I will still be developing this. Right, so even at 7 development it's given us more than 4 decades, it's insane how good this province is. And uh, yeah, I did play Lubeck before, I did turn this province into a gold mine. So if you guys are interested in something like that, I do recommend playing as Lubeck. And one of their missions allows you to basically change any province in the game to a gold mine. So of course, combining this monument that gives 9 local goods produced just turns it into an insane province. Yeah, so I kinda was wait waiting for our truce to expire with Muscovy and then I noticed that this happened. What in the world is this? They have been split up into Novgorod, Muscovy, Perm, Nizhny Nov- Oh god, that is too cursed. And he's guaranteed by Nogai. What the hell? Well, this is kinda inconvenient because we need to build like tons of claims now. And we have formed Colonial Canada, which is by default named Vinland. It's gonna be our first crown colony, let's go. I really expect them to be attacked by some natives here, but as always, if this happens, we can just enforce peace. 
Right, so Novgorod, you are going down. We're gonna fight Nogai and Nizhny Novgorod, which is fine. They did enter the coalition, so we can remove them real quick. That is gonna be a good war. And it is also a good test for Riga's troops. I wanna see how they do versus this 10,000 stack. Let's see. Come on, Riga. Wipe them out. Oh, it's not a wipe. Really bad timing for this 21,000 rebels. Oh, no. Right, this is our second colony, New Sweden. It's gonna be another crown colony. Now we can move another guy over here. Let's continue expanding in Caribbean. So this is what I was talking about. Cherokee and Chiaja are ruthless. Well, guys, I don't like what you're doing. So please enforce peace. We are coming with good intentions here, as I said. So please be respectful. They're just gonna keep doing this. It is very, very annoying. I think AI should really calculate if they can do a war versus the colony combined with the overlord because as it is right now they just keep declaring wars that they cannot even win and they always accept the enforced peace demand so why even declare? By the way I guess we can make our colonies a bit stronger anyways by also sending officers to them like we did with Riga. And we can even send them money once we have a bit more like 200-300 ducats to each of the colonies to give them a bit of a boost. Oh crap, truce has expired with Lubeck and we can fight him again. Good news, really good news. So even though I have not positioned my troops well, I will be starting this. Maybe Riga can take care of this for us. Would be neat, let's go. And colonialism has spawned, unfortunately we didn't get it. It was Castile that got it, well, that's unlikely I guess. And nah, you gotta be kidding me, like, why? Why would Castile ever ally France, like, they're... 99% of the time they're the biggest rivals. Oh man, that sucks so much. Right, so this is fair and square. Lubeck full annexation is 47 aggressive expansion. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Let's just go. Alright, German coastline is completed. Core creation cost minus 10% for 25 years. And also Bane of the Hansa. Core base production and additional 30 trade power for 50 years, which is not too bad. I think let's just go ahead and integrate these boys right away. And of course, let's not forget to take nobility integration policy. Okay, looks like we can get a new vassal, Scotland. I would not mind that. So let's get this Lang's royal marriage. And just need to proclaim a guarantee, improve relations. We got this new vassal. He has a lot of cores, so I could just ask England to give these cores back. So we have 95 favors. Although, they didn't like us getting this vassal. Minus 8 relations, oh god. Okay, so we cannot request them. Can I still improve? Um, I should have improved the relations before actually vassalizing them. Oh man, I hope they won't break the lines right away. No, they did. Okay, we messed up. Well, I guess the only way now is to reconquer these provinces, but they're allied with Portugal, Savoy, Friesland. Oh no. We need more allies, boys. We need more allies. Portugal. We could get Portugal. Hungary wants an alliance and we could potentially maybe vassalize them. Although I don't really expect like to conquer lands from Ottomans anytime soon. It would be a bit of pain in the ass like they could declare. You know what? I don't need it. I think I don't need it. I'll pass it. For now, let's continue expanding in Russian region. We can go for a war versus sperm. Get Muscovy out of here at the same time. Okay, we're going to Mexico. I made some claims. There we go. Can actually start a very quick war versus mosquito boy get out of here you mosquito and i have a war versus nizhny novgorod so basically full annexation is waiting here but like look at this guys these bronzes 90 aggressive expansion 90 over extension it's a bit crazy so i'm first waiting for my course to finish before finishing this and then we can take rostov and riazan too right we actually have another government reform available for us um this one's quite good Reduced local unrest in the provinces with temples. I do have a lot of unrest problems, like, yeah, there's a few factions spawning. But I probably still will go for additional diplomat. This is overall probably my favorite one for tier 4, so let's go with this. Oh, look at that, boys. 15 go progress. I don't mind that. Give me that. At least we can actually concentrate some development here, so it's not gonna be as nasty to core. 97%, okay, we're good. And we still have that discount, so this is fine. We're looking really bulky now, real bulky. 
Right, let's go ahead and get colonialism at this point. And yeah, I didn't calculate this good enough. We're actually going to be above 100 over extension for a, quite a while. So that's not really good. We will have to deal with a lot of rebels. But I guess in this case we can also just take this. Doesn't really matter anymore. At least we don't have these small guys roaming around anymore. So less coalition members. And we have finished quality ideas giving us additional 5 discipline artillery combat ability. And our first policy is available. So we're getting... Plus one diplomatic reputation, this is gonna allow us annex our subjects a bit faster. And speaking of annexing subjects, 1516, this is when I will annex Norway. Now if I could just get Austria, I would love to go for a war versus England. But they have good opinion. 142, oh, okay. What if we reduce it? It is still minus 110, okay, that sucks. What if I change up my rivals? I would love to rival England instead. And instead of the Ottomans, let's also go with Poland. Maybe some way I can get France on my side. That would be cool. Swedish Mexico. Here we go. Third colonial nation formed. And I'm continuing the expansion in Mexico. I'm getting a colony in Colombia next. Alright, we also have level 10 admin technology, which means we can select our third idea group. Now, I kind of want to go for something that boosts our discipline even more, because all these bonuses are just crazy. Admin ideas would be just lovely, but this is no boost to discipline. Economic is 5%, the policy. But is this good enough? Gold depletion, chance, tax modifier. Development from manufacturers plus one, that's pretty cool. So we could just spam our country with manufacturers and it would increase our development in these lands. Goods produced 10% is good. Nah, so I think if we want to go for something like to industrialize our nation, to play somewhat tallish, infrastructure is probably better than economic. Even though we're not getting really good policies, this is minus 10 years for personal union integration. No longer needed because I will integrate Norway after the wars. However, the policy with quality ideas is not too bad at all. Army drill gain modifier and yearly army professionalism, which is not bad. I guess plus one double rep is cool. I do want to take this because I plan to build like a shit ton of buildings in Sweden. And this is going to give us dev cost reduction, state governing cost reduction, fort maintenance reduction, movement speed. Should be good. Let's go for infrastructure ideas. By the way, this Mexico is getting huge. Absolutely huge. Oh, we got additional settlers here. Cool. Alright, so I have finished the wars. I have completely trapped Kazan here. Next war we can probably just eat him up. We can upgrade our Gurning rank to Empire. So Gurning capacity, no, mo no more a problem. Get some additional crownlands, 42%. And you know what? I think I will even sell titles. Like, I don't really want to lose the crownlands, but I do want to repay my loans. Because this will allow us to complete another mission. So next month... No, we need 545. Okay. Oh, okay. So I did begin to integrate Norway. But my ruler died. And we inherited the throne anyways. So okay, this saves us a lot of diplo points. This is cool. We guys have 565 ruler. Although he is 50 years old. So not gonna live for too long. However, this allows us to complete integrate Sami now because I did change their culture they changed the Sami province to Swedish this is great and very shortly we can complete another super super nice mission just need to do land of the Prussians first and have two stability so yeah we need to fight Poland or Commonwealth I should say at this point and they're still in the coalition what do we do about this coalition man it's so annoying I think what I am gonna do is just abandon the new world for now we have expanded quite a lot there, so it can wait now. And I will return to Europe, improve relations, eventually fight Poland or even Great Britain. But I do want to prioritize Poland because I do want to complete that mission. Right, colony number four. Let's make this a private enterprise. Cuba boys, we have Cuba and Caraibas here with Portugal. Loan repaid. Increase our income is done. Production efficiency, shipbuilding time, global prosperity. So now we can actually work on this. We need 1,500 ducats to get investment of Falun. And this is gonna be huge. This is gonna be really huge. Boom, forest expansion. I have developed all the forest and wood provinces to 6 development at least. Every own province in Scandinavia gets 10% progression for prosperity. And Arctic climate provinces get Arctic expansion. 
expansion giving local development cost minus 40% and number of buildings plus one. Okay, so yeah, I'm glad actually we took infrastructure ideas because this is gonna work super well with our mission tree. And yes, I am fine with the provinces here changing religion to Protestant because I do intend to flip to Protestant myself. I think I'm doing the last resort getting these guys out of the collision by sending some gifts. Bribe these guys. Here we go, helps a little bit. Look, we're starting to look good, like a few more nations and we're good to go. Yeah, so this first infrastructure idea just increased our balance by 5 ducats flat. It's really good. We're earning 23 ducats and we're running a large army, 80,000 soldiers, plus stability. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. And you know what? I think we can manage to ally France, even though we have Austria. This should be good. So just royal married these guys. Military reforms as well. Yeah, 20% morale of armies for 10 years. This is our gateway to fighting Commonwealth for sure. I will definitely be using this. So in the next 10 years, we will be declaring this war for sure. Okay, coalition is dismantled. Everyone is leaving. This is the time to strike, boys. So unfortunately, none of our allies will join. But look at this Commonwealth free morale. We have 5.11. So yeah, boys. 103,000 soldiers. The Knights on hold and Venice. Venice is kind of an issue. It's annoying that they're here. 67,000 as well. Yeah, that kind of sucks. But we can start and maybe during the war in white... Austria and France, maybe. I think we can also move this stack from Mexico back to our mainland to help us out a little bit. Just have the maximum chances to do this. Whoa, English Age of Iceland. I didn't know about this event, but that's amazing. 200 ducats and what? 10 development in Iceland. That is nuts. These provinces are really good now. Okay, let's go. No more time to waste. Just gonna take it slowly. Stick together, boys. And of course we have this amazing 35 stack from Riga. Oh, I didn't time this the best way because we just lost our golden era and 10% morale of armies, but okay. Right, no running around. No running around. Did they just beat a- Oh my god, Venice actually came here and just destroyed my navy. This guy, bro, this guy. That's what you get for destroying my navy, boy. That's what you get. Oh my god, 20,000 stack wipe. Beautiful. This is a big battle that I might lose or win if they don't come on time. Oh god, no, we're done here. We're done. No, 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 boys, retreat. So it seems that I might need to get some mercs up because this is not really going well. 40k stack should do. You go, Riga. You go, my boy. Oh, I love to see this. The bad thing is that we're out of manpower, but the good thing is that he is down to 20,000 and 63k soldiers, so this is decent. We can outlast him for sure, we're doing way better economically, so we can just get mercenaries upon mercenaries if needed. Now, of course, he gets the fort in 14%. Classic AI things, 14% fort, no problem. But for us, we need like 42 minimum. Yeah, okay, he's kind of getting owned now. How is he doing? No more manpower. Alright. What is this crazy Moldova stack? Holy. Okay, so I got Venice out. I did get Venice out. Good. Okay, so we can unlock investment of Falun because I just took the burger loans. And this is really important. What we can do here is upgrade this once manually. Before that, maybe let's get rid of some of that. 1,792. And the good thing about this is that we can upgrade it by another level for 1,500. So this is gonna be max level now. Alright, I think he's screwed. So we are free to actually start carpet sieging a little bit. And it's Age of Reformation now. Alright. Such a classic, guys. 64% doesn't fall. Plus 2 stability. Right. This means reforms of Wassa. Look at that, man. Monthly autonomy change until the end of the game, minus 0.05. Lots of development, government reform progress, and Finno-Swedish relations as well, because I have been developing my country. So we have the requirements ready. Creates a level 2 center of trade. We're getting the third stability and a town hall. Awesome. To get the Hakapelita cavalry units, we just need 5 barracks in this region. So easily can do that whenever we need to. So this is going to be a reconquest. I'm taking 2,000 decades. This one additional province. 
and this doesn't cause much aggressive expansion at all. Now, do we break any alliances? Maybe with Venice, but Venice is kind of easy to defeat. I am afraid that if I break this alliance, they could get someone more tough. So I think this is good enough. Now, look at that, guys. Not only we got these scores back, but we can go to Diplomacy and release Lithuania. So this is the game changer. We didn't get the personal union over Poland, but now we have the subject with how many cores, like guys. Land of the Prussians, boys. And Scandinavian Empire. So until the end of the game, we're getting yearly legitimacy, maximum absolutism plus 20, and Scandinavia no longer needs admin tech of 20 to be formed. Now what this means is that we can go to decisions, form Scandinavian nation. Country changes to Scandinavia, we obtain new missions, new traditions and ambitions as well. And these are just amazing, like look at that. We have 5% discipline, goods produced 15% instead of the regular 10 with Sweden. Still keep national manpower modifier 20%. Construction cost, which is gonna work amazing with infrastructure ideas. Admin efficiency plus 5%. We still keep possible policies. We have trade efficiency and ship durability. Morale of navies. Cav cost and cav fire this time. Infantry compatibility, we still keep this. And we also get even more absolutism. So for the age of absolutism, these idea sets are just crazy. We got additional 20 from the mission and 10 from here. Now, since we did form Scandinavia, we have unlocked this lower part of the mission tree. So the mission tree in total is just amazingly large. But I guess this is expected. Alliance of the North did a really, really good rework for these Scandinavian nations. Of course, we need to retake strong duchies. We lost it after we formed a new nation. And yeah, next time we fight Commonwealth, it's gonna be a complete bloodbath. But now we can use this money to repay some of these nasty loans that we had. Here we go. We're left with the 1% ones. What do you mean trade favors for ducats? Are you crazy? We just got out of this war. You were just a useless ally. Didn't help us at all. Get the hell out of here, man. Actually, you know what? Let's basically insult him. I'm gonna spend all the money. Except here you go. You're getting nothing, my boy. Now we can select next government reform. I have been barraging a lot of stuff and I will keep barraging so artillery cost and barrage cost for me I think is gonna be the best one. And we do need, speaking of cost, to rebuild our navy that pesky Venetians have destroyed so I will work on this as well. Hey our colony of New Scandinavia has been expanding, lovely to see they have nearly this whole coast. How is the Colonial Canada doing? They also did get some additional provinces. I don't remember having these. Like, at least these three provinces we didn't have. Oh my god, the amount of Diplo points that we have is just nuts. I don't even know where to spend them. And I don't even have, like, upgraded advisors. Like, this is crazy. Technology is looking just amazing. I think at this point, just promote mercantilism. Maybe later we can figure out where we want to develop. Right, so I think Kazan is just like nasty here inside of our nation. I'm gonna finish this claim and declare. Did Transoxiana form Bukhara? Bukhara in West Siberia. Oh my goodness. It must be Transoxiana. They're allied Afghanistan, Sistan, Cardel, Delhi. This has gotta be the worst formable in the game. Finally, 50 spy network on this guy. So he absolutely doesn't want to piece me out. They have allies Chagatai, Gorka, and I cannot get more war score. So really what I can do is steal maps from this guy. I think we need Central Asia to reach Chagatai, right? This should be good. Yeah, so now we're free to actually go here. Oh my god, these Bukhara borders. No, it's not Transoxiana that formed Bukhara. So who did it? Was that Uzbek? Gotta be, right? Hakapelita is unlocked. What do we have here next? We need to hire it for 60 months or more, have at least 50,000 cavalry, 10 provinces with barracks, and this would give us Hakapelita army skirmishers and elites. Whoa. Okay, that's crazy. Okay, finally I got these bastards out of here. So this means we can also finish the war and fully annex Kazan. Really nice name placement now. I'm gonna take a couple loans. Let's finish building this great project in Dallas Kogan. 12 ducats now. And I'm also gonna build a manufactory here, which costs only 241 ducats. Oh, that's just good. It's time, guys. It's betrayal time. So, first of all, ask for some ducats. Now, I would love if you would break this alliance with Naples, let's say. So, at this point, if we declare a war on Brandenburg, 
Austria is in. Now the question is, can we ally these remaining boys? So that would be Bohemia, Cologne, Mainz. So I have allied everyone except for three year. They don't want this alliance. Um, but they're super close actually. So if we just go insult someone like Lorraine, we should be good. Yeah, we can get him. So this is perfect. You by this time know what's going on. So yep, yeah, let's just go. Gonna be very quick and easy war. And I plan to take maybe even full annex Brandenburg. I want to take a lot of stuff. So let's roll. Alright, I'm not gonna allow you to stand here for too long. And I have barraged win. We're almost done here. We can take level 11 admin. Sure, let's do that. Um, I do want to build a lot more barracks, to be honest. Maximum manpower, 83,000. That is not a lot. I would love to have at least 100,000 by now. So let's spam this. Oh my god, he's reconquering so fast. Oh god. Come on, boys. Okay, we have finished building the manufactory in Dalaskogin. 15 ducats from this province. It's crazy. So now we can industrialize Sweden, which is granting us another 5% discipline for 25 years. 1,000 ducats. This we can easily complete. Just need to build 100% of force limit of navy. So like 20 more ships, we can definitely do that. Let's also get a flagship. And this will be a trade ship. I will go with trade power per ship and fleet. That's it, boys. Oh, wait, it's not it. I still need to conquer three year. And for a second, I really panicked. I completely forgot they were in this war. I was like, are they actually not in this war? And I completely failed. But we're good. Okay, so just go to free year. Now that's it. Now we can go ahead and click this button. And we're actually going to get a lot of mana points because we have super high prestige. So this is amazing. Our projections, Splendor, Mana Points, beautiful. Give me 300 ducats and we do complete one of the missions, which is Handle the Empire. Less than one members in the HRE. Burma claims on basically whole Germany area. Amazing. Recover the borders, even more Mana Points. From here we can start piecing out some of these guys out. And we got the ships, so this is done. This is done, trade efficiency. And monopolize the Baltic. Copper of Dalaskogin happens. Okay, so this is interesting. Obviously, this is a copper province, and we can change the price of copper by 150% for 40 years. We can just straight up take 2400 ducats, but this will decrease the price. Or we can slightly increase it and take 1000 ducats as well. This also grants mercantilism, five of it, so I think I will be going with the price increase. Dude, dude, 30 decades province and it's not even gold. Oh my god. Wait, I wonder if I take like a balloon province, can I release Burgundy from it? I think balloon is not in the French group, is it? Maybe we could release it from Francian? So yeah, let's take Picardy. Let's see how this is gonna end up. So infrastructure ideas are done. This is good. We have some additional policies that we can take. Let's take the yearly army professionalism one and diplo reputation, not now at least. Now, by by the way, guys, I want to show you this. After we finish infrastructure ideas, we have minus 100% expand administration cost. So this kind of works like admin ideas in a way. Like this would give 20% gov capacity modifier. Now, if we go to gov reforms, we can expand administration for four reform progress and we're getting 20 governing capacity. So look at this, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and we're just spam getting governing capacity very, very cheaply. Oh no, our ruler died, uh, this is for 5 years, this kind of sucks, but we can still declare wars. Okay, so we're actually good. I definitely want to go into this next war right after this one. So Goslar, please get the hell out of here. And I think we're done here. So I do want to take Ditmarchen, which is why I started this war. And Brandenburg, well, I will take the most I can. I don't think we can get full annexation here. Yeah, we're lacking one province, actually. Which is fine. I'm still going for this peace deal. I don't give a damn. Now, boys, we can complete Dominium Maris Baltici. Years of separatism, minus five until the end of the game. I guess it's the moment of truth. Can we release Burgundy? Yes, we actually can release Burgundy from Picardy. I had no idea, but yes, this is great. This is another amazing, amazing vassal for us. I would love to get this money, so I will actually sell titles here. 
Now repay the debt. We didn't have much of it. I will upgrade some centers of trade. Let's go ahead and do that. Aggressive expansion is high, but I will definitely concentrate development over here and possibly here. Below 100. Great. So it's just the matter of admin points to core everything up. We will soon finish annexing Teutonic Order, so our borders will look pretty good. And now the coalition will be, of course, insane. So the only thing I don't want to happen is for Commonwealth to enter it, which is why I will start this war versus them right away. I don't think I evil will bother getting rid of the alliances. I will get rid of them later. Doesn't really matter. We're gonna lose a bit of Diplo points, whatever, man. Don't want to take this chance of them entering anytime. So let's just go for reconquest. Vilno. It's Vilnius, not Vilno. Let's go, boys. At least this time it's gonna be easy peasy. They're down bad. They're down bad, boys. And we have the ships. So if Venice tries to do something funny, you know. Wait, what is this looming disaster? Religious turmoil? Oh, crap. Okay, um, anyways, I think I will change my religion to Protestant after this war. In the meantime, let's try, I guess, to dissolve the coalition. Don't think it's gonna be even possible for us to do so, but we can try. And since it's so cheap, 36 points, I'm just going to barrage every fort I can. I can do this with this army because it's the mercenary one. And it's good to see our manpower is actually above 100,000. That's what I wanted. Bastards, man. You bastards. Oh, I see what you're doing. Venice is here. Probably gonna lose this battle anyways, but we can try and win. No, it's a 70,000 stack. This guy, bro. Gotta give it to them. Venice is super, super annoying. But here we go. We got this. And now you bastards will pay. You will pay for this. You know, Venice, there is consequences to your actions. There actually is. Don't forget about that. This guy, man, just keeps trying to siege. Um, sure. Let's go for this. And is this a wipe? I hope it is. No, it's not. But we have finished the colony of Panama, which means we have established Scandinavian Colombia now, too. There we go. Colony game going well. We have five colonies. Colonial nations, I should say. Didn't touch Africa in this run, but yeah. I guess we still could if we wanted to. Oh, I don't no longer have a colonist, so if we want to continue this, we need to actually unlock exploration next. But that's possible. The thing about AI, like this guy just constantly retakes forts at like 7-14%. That's the only thing I really hate about these wars. Oh yeah, so the disaster is beginning. That kind of sucks. 25 regiments. And I will go for this one. I do want to have missionary strength versus heretics. Let's go with this. But these are Protestant zealots. Um, if they will convert my nation, then go ahead, do so. Stop him, boys. Stop him at 64%, please. Nice. Right, so we are pretty much done here. Got a lot of forts. He's completely out of men. We are about to finish the war. The knights are actually pieced out. 95% war score. I think this is it. So now the question is how much we can actually take. Well, you're going to return a lot, a lot, of course. Okay, so we can actually take this huge chunk. I think I am fine with that. 25 aggressive expansion for all these lands, boys. It's absolutely nuts. Look at that. Massive Lithuania. 4,000 decades in our balance. I mean, we're just rolling here. So if we look into the map mode for player, this is what we actually have. We have some stuff, of course, in the new world like this. In terms of great powers, we're the first one with 1.8k development. Ottomans are going absolutely crazy as well. Like, what do they have? Whole Balkans. Caucasia is theirs. They haven't fought the Mamluks that much. They probably took like provinces in one war. Tripoli Tugort exists still. What is happening here? They're allied with Tlemts and Ottomans. Okay. And this is Genoa? I thought this was Algiers. Whoa. So Genoa somehow managed to expand into North Africa. Spain has formed. They're doing okay-ish, I guess. I didn't fight Great Britain. I probably should have because Scotland has some cores. What do they have here? Actually, only four cores, so it's not that good of a vassal, to be honest. And here we go. I have converted our religion to Protestant. So now we can actually complete another mission. Theologian Discussions. Missionary Strength plus 3%. And this unlocks branching missions for us. Catholic Path, Reformation Path or Humanist Path. So of course we're gonna go with number 2. 
course we can just set this autonomous guy to convert everything we can get defender of the faith to get additional missionary oh, wait this actually allows us to complete another mission so here we go join the reformation boys but yeah we have expanded quite a lot we have this amazing lithuania subject crazy cash flow amazing subjects Estates are looking good, no problems with earning capacity, we have some additional admin efficiency. Overall the campaign went absolutely amazing, despite the fact that we did a lot of mistakes like with Poland. We did a mistake with Burgundian inheritance, however we have released Burgundy, so whenever we need to, of course we can just reconquer these cores from France now. France ate up Brunswick it seems. So I hope you enjoyed this run, we completed like a lot a lot of missions here like 70 percent of the mission tree or so if you did enjoy the video then make sure to leave a like if you didn't well then you can dislike the video i would really appreciate if you would subscribe that would help the channel a lot and you would be notified of the future uploads and yeah guys this is where we will finish the run take care and see you in the next video and i want to say a huge thank you for supporting the channel on patreon to voino